In this video, we're going to look at the last topic in chapter 17, which is complex ions. Um, so complex ions, we saw an example of this in chapter, I'm sorry, in, in lab, where we did, when we did experiment 13. Uh, for example, when we wanted to dissolve uh, silver chloride into aqueous solution, normally it's insoluble, uh, we added ammonia and it formed a complex of silver ammonia. So uh, the complex basically was uh, you had silver plus two ammonia in solution. Um, and then this made Ag, and the Ag was bound to two NH3s, two ammonia groups, and the whole thing had a plus one charge. So the reason why we call it a complex ion is because it is a an ion that has both a, a metal ion in the center, and it also has ligands which are bound to the metal ion. So the ligands in this case would be ammonia. That would be anything that connects to the metal ion in the center. And we have a few different um, we have a few different things that we can start to define. So the bond that's formed um, between the metal ion and the ligand is called a coordinate covalent bond. So that's the name of the bond of this Ag and H3 bond. And it's formed between a Lewis acid and a Lewis base. So basically what a Lewis acid is and a Lewis base is it has to do with an electron um, pair. So the Lewis base donates an electron pair and then the Lewis acid accepts the electron pair. So what we're talking about is in the case of silver, um, if you have silver ion and you have NH3, NH3, if you look at the Lewis structure, there's a lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons gets donated to the silver, and then this forms the silver ion NH3 bond. So these two electrons come from the ligand. So that, that's what a, um, a complex ion is. And there are two constants that we can define related to the equilibrium. So uh, on the left side here, we're going to talk about formation. So the formation constant. And this is where we take basically the silver plus uh, the, silver, the silver ion plus the ammonia. Um, and then this forms an equilibrium with the complex ion. So um, in this case, the complex ion, we can also write that as AgNH32 plus. And then what the brackets denote is that this is a complex ion. So if we wanted to write an equilibrium expression for this, we would call this Kf for formation. This would equal the AgNH32 plus concentration divided by the concentration of Ag plus over the concentration of NH3 squared. So that would be the formation constant. And then we can also define the reverse, which would be called the dissociation constant. And this would be if we were to flip this reaction around. So this would be the silver ammonia complex um, breaking up into the silver ions, oops, that should just be a silver ion in solution plus two NH3 aqueous. So one is the formation, the other one is the, um, is the complex breaking up. So what we'll notice is that when we write KD, KD is going to be equal to the silver plus concentration um, times the ammonia concentration squared divided by the complex ion concentration. And so the relationship then is that uh, because these are, these are the, it's the same equilibrium, just whether we are flipping the reactants and the products, when we do that, we remember that Kf is equal to 1 over Kd, meaning um, if we write the Kf because the other one is the inverse, we have to inverse the K to give us the K for the inverse of the reaction. Another way of writing this would be that Kf times Kd is equal to 1. So now, given this introduction, um, we're going to look at a problem that uses complex ions um, that you might see on the exam. In the last in the last part of this video, we're going to look at a we're going to look at a calculation that uses complex ion equilibria. 
So if we start the problem, it says, what is the concentration of copper 2 plus in a solution that was originally 0.015 molar copper nitrate and 0.1 molar ammonia? Then it says, when you combine copper and when, when you combine copper and ammonia together, it forms a complex ion copper ammonia 2 plus. The formation constant is 4.8 times 10 to the 12th. So in the beginning of this problem, what we have is we have a limiting reagent problem in front of us, right? We have some copper nitrate, which is going to give us some copper 2 plus. We have some ammonia, and the problem tells us that when you take copper and you put it in the presence of ammonia, it makes this complex ion, copper ammonia 4, 2 plus. So we're going to start this problem by seeing, you know, okay, we have these two different reagents that are going to react together. They're going to make a product. Uh, which one is the limiting reagent, if any? And then how much excess reagent do we have? So we have copper 2 plus aqueous plus 4NH3 aqueous gives our complex ion copper NH3 4 2 plus. And we start with 0 0.015 molar of the copper 2 plus, and we start with 0 0.100 molar of the NH3. Now, before these things react, uh, we have zero molar of the complex. So now we got to figure out which one's the limiting reagent. So we got to be a little clever here. It's a little bit more difficult than when we had the limiting reagent tables for um, buffers, because in this case, we don't have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. But you can kind of think of it this way. Um, if we have this much and we, we need to react four times as much of that for this, you can basically say, well, what is four times 0.015? Well, that's 0.06. So that's less than this one, so this one is going to be our limiting reagent, the copper 2 plus. If you have to, you can go back to chapter 3, do the full limiting reagent problem out, but you can kind of see what I did there. You can kind of say, well, what would happen if I used up all of this, and what would happen if I used up all of that? Which one is going to limit? So our limiting reagent is going to be the copper 2 plus. So that means that when we subtract 0 0.015 molar, we're going to get 0 molar here. And then with this one, we're going to subtract 4 times 0 0.015 molar on this side. So this is going to leave us with an excess of 0 0.040 molar for the ammonia. And then for our product, the complex ion, because there's a one-to-one -one ratio here and here, we get plus 0 0.015 molar and a complex ion concentration of 0 0.015 molar. So now what's going to happen is, is we've combined our starting reactants together. They've come together to make the complex. We get a certain amount of complex and we get a certain amount of ammonia. Now, some people would be tempted to say, well, okay, I've done my reaction and my, um, my concentration of copper 2 plus is going to be zero. Um, but we can't do that. We have, to, we have to remember that what's going to happen is when we make our complex ion, the complex ion is going to dissociate according to the equation um, copper ammonia complex uh, 4 is going to give us copper 2 plus plus 4 ammonia back. So once we form the complex, a small tiny amount of it's going to break apart in solution according to the equilibrium of KD. So now what we have is we have a, a basically a common ion effect problem. We have our, for our ice table, we have 0 0.015 molar of the complex. We have 0 molar of the copper 2 plus, and we have 0 0.040 molar of the ammonia. And so this is what I mean by a, uh, this is what I mean by a common ion effect. We have the ammonia that's there. So that's going to that's gonna influence the balance of this equilibrium. And then we go through and we do our usual setup for the change. So we're going to do minus x, plus x, and plus 4x, which gives us equilibrium concentrations of 0 0.015 molar minus x, x, and 0 0.040 molar plus 4x. So now over here, now that we have this, over here we can write KD and say, well, KD is going to equal the concentration of copper 2 plus, which is what we're looking for, times the concentration of ammonia to the fourth power, divided by the concentration of copper ammonia complex, 
and um, now we can start to plug in from our ice table. We just have to remember that K, uh, KD is going to equal 1 over KF. Um, so we have the formation constant, which is 4.8 times 10 to the 12. So if we take the inverse of that, meaning we divide 1 by 4.8 times 10 to the 12, we get a dissociation constant of 2.08 times 10 to the minus 13. So now we can plug in, we get 2.08 times 10 to the minus 13 is equal to x times 0 0.040 molar minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 4x to the fourth divided by 0 0.015 molar plus x. So now this looks like a bear to solve, but um, we can actually use our assumption, which will help us out. So the, the dissociation constant is so small in this case, times 10 to the minus 13th, that you guys can see that, that these x values are going to be very, very small compared to those concentrations. If you were to do the math and, and divide it out and take the concentration divided by that number, you're going to get something that's much, 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 much larger than, than um, 100. So that means that these, these x values can be eliminated. So we can simplify this as 2.08 times 10 to the minus 13th is equal to x times 0 0.040 molar to the fourth divided by 0 0.015 molar. And then it just becomes a simple algebra problem where you solve for x and you get your concentration equal to 1.22 times 10 to the minus 9. So again, you can see that this does combine some stuff, some concepts from chapter 16, the limiting reagent table in the beginning. And then after that, it just becomes a regular old equilibrium problem. We have an equilibrium reaction, we set up an ice table, and we go from there.